I want to talk just briefly here about practice valuation and what buyers are buying. And practice value is really only a subset of the concept of practice profitability. Practice profitability is, is important even before you go to sell because it improves the cash flow that you have that the owner can either take out of the practice or reinvest in the practice. But practice value is, is a critical component of profitability or a critical outgrowth of profitability. When buyers buy practices, we tend to think that they're buying tangible assets. And by tangible assets, I mean things like furniture, equipment, computers, vehicles, inventory, um, some investments, say in an emergency clinic, software licenses, accounts receivable, all of the assets that you can see and touch and feel. So they're tangible in nature. Buyers, however, are also buying intangible assets. And the biggest of the intangible assets is going to be goodwill. Another term for goodwill is blue sky. And goodwill is largely the expectation that in the future, the practice will continue to be as profitable then as it is now. And when you look at the factors that make up goodwill, they are very wide ranging. Some of it may have to do with the location of the practice. Um, is it a place that's easy for clients to find? They're used to coming there. Simply the fact that the practice is a going concern, it's been around for a while, so it has a reputation in the, in the community. That contributes to goodwill. Uh, the client records, so you have a whole group of clients who are used to bringing their pets into this particular practice for their annual examinations and when their pets get sick. Personnel contribute a lot to goodwill, and that's both staff members as well as veterinarians. The industry outlook can be a piece of it. We have a recession right now. Um, practices aren't, many practices are not as profitable now as they were in the past. Ultimately, the recession will go away, and so the industry outlook will get a little bit brighter. So we have to focus not just on things that we can control within our practice, such as the management systems, the, our reputation, the quality of medicine and surgery, but our value is also going to be impacted by these outside factors. So when you say, what are buyers really buying? Technically, they're buying the tangible assets, the things you can touch and feel, but what they're really buying is an expectation of future profits. They expect that the cash flow will continue in the practice, that the practice will be as profitable and generate as much cash flow in the future, as much or more as it does now. And if they can't see that when they're making the buying decision, then they're not going to buy the practice. And it's this profits and this expectation of future cash flow that drives the value of goodwill in a practice valuation. I want to touch just briefly on the concept of rules of thumb and practice valuation. 20 years ago, practices sold for generally multiples of gross revenue. And probably the most common rule of thumb was the idea that a practice is worth 100% of its gross revenue. The advantages of rules of thumb is that they're cheap and they're easy. The disadvantages is that except by sheer good luck, they're completely inaccurate. There is simply no way to take one piece of information, one factoid about a practice, and translate that into what the value is. What rules of thumb don't do is take into account varying levels of profitability in individual practices, and they don't take into account other variables such as the demographics surrounding the practice, the location, the competition, the internal systems, the, the quality of the personnel. Rules of thumb only look at one particular item, in this case, revenue. And there are other rules of thumb, but the most common one has definitely been the concept that a practice is worth 100% of gross. Let me give you an example of rules of thumb and, and why they don't make any sense as, a, uh, as an estimate of, of practice value. Let's say you have practice A, and that practice has a million dollars in gross revenue and $100,000 in profits. And then you have practice B, and practice B also has a million dollars in gross revenue, but it has $200,000 in profits. If you were to use a rule of thumb, say this rule of thumb that says a practice is worth 100% of gross, each of these practices would have the same value. They'd each be worth a million bucks. But if you think about it logically, why on earth would you pay the same amount for a practice that has $100,000 in profits when for that same price, you could get a practice that has $200,000 in profits. So even if we didn't look at anything else, you can see clearly that rules of thumb don't make any sense. 20 years ago, they did make sense. Practices were more similar. 
they did have similar levels of profitability. So if you used gross revenue, that could be a reasonable indication. But, but now, 20 years hence, it simply doesn't work anymore. Let's talk about another uh, group of factors that impact practice value. And this also makes it clear why rules of thumb are not a good way of valuing a practice. Risk factors is a, is a term that covers a whole bunch of different aspects of a practice that impact value. And so risk factors may be things like where is the practice located? Um, is the practice revenue growing or declining? Does it have personnel that have been with the practice for a long period of time? Do the associate doctors have non-compete covenants? There's probably, most appraisers probably use a list of somewhere between 10 and 15 of these risk factors to evaluate aspects of the practice beyond the calculation of profitability. What the risk factors help you understand is whether the profits will continue into the future. So again, if we come back to our example of practice A, it has a million dollars in gross revenues and $200,000 in profits. But practice A is located in a growing neighborhood filled with expensive homes, lots of kids. Lots of kids generally means lots of pets. You have practice B. Now practice B's gross revenue is the same as practice A. It's a million dollars. Practice B also has $200,000 in profits. So it's equivalent to practice A in that regard as well. However, practice B is located in a built out neighborhood mostly senior citizens who are living on fixed incomes and less expensive homes. So even though right now practice B has the same amount of gross revenue as practice A and the same amount of, of profits, it doesn't, the risk factors for that practice don't look as, as good. It's less likely that practice B will continue to be profitable in the future. Practice A has a much more prosperous looking future.